What is up, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, and today we've got something really exciting. We've got Jim McNair from Kershaw and ZT, and uh, we're going to be going over uh, the new knives that uh, Kershaw and ZT are coming out with for 2021. Isn't that right, Jim? That's right. All right. We are super excited, super stoked to bring these knives to you. Uh, let's uh, dive right in and take a look at some of them. Okay. So first up, we're going to start with some things that are a little unusual for us. So first off, I want to start off with the with the capsule. So this is a this is a, a Jens Anso design. It's a collaboration we're doing with him. Um, it's kind of like a utility knife in that it's it isn't out the front but it is manual action. So you press the, it has a little blue button here on the handle. You depress that, you can slide it all the way out the front and then it locks into place in the open position. It's a real small, light little knife, um, just really about two cool. inch blade. That's a great like little utility knife. It, it's like a, uh, it's like a utility knife on steroids here, but it's, it's fun to actually have and carry. You don't have to worry about um, it being too big in your pocket. It's so small, great clip there. Exactly. I love this thing. It's got that small deep carry clip if you want to do that, or you, it, we have a nice lanyard loop, or you can put your key ring on there. Lots of different ways to carry this. Yeah, that integrated uh, spacer lanyard loop there. That it's just a really cool little design. I really like that thing. It's just fun, and I, I hate to say it, it's it's kind of fidgety. You just kind of sit there and want to play with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I do want to point out that it is single edged. Um, the spine is not sharpened. Exactly, and that makes it legal everywhere, so you don't have to worry about any of that. But it has that cool double-edged look about it. Makes it kind of interesting, but again, just a fun, easy to carry small package. That is fantastic. And um, what is that one going to retail for? Um, that one will be forty nine ninety nine okay. at MSRP pricing. All right, MSRP forty nine ninety nine. We are really excited to see that. That's that's really cool. All right, let's move on to what we got next. Okay, so this one. You know, this, this is an interesting piece. This is called the, this is called the platform. So this is actually a, I'm calling it a slip joint. You know, you guys are kind of the masters of this stuff, right? This is a modern double detent non-locking folder. Yeah. So I don't know if, can I call that a slip joint? I've been it, wondering all week. It, it operates a lot like a slip joint. I don't, I don't know that I would call it that necessarily, but okay. I mean, technically so we'll call no, it a non-locking but, folder. <laughs> exactly. It, it operates just like a slip joint. Yeah, Absolutely. And it's nice and smooth. Uh, we're real happy with the action on this one. Um, but I mean, this one really is interesting because it's it's kind of you know we have this really nice Warncliffe. Well, I take that back. A sheep's foot blade. Yeah. Uh, kind of a modified sheep's foot because you got a little bit of belly to it, but it yeah. has that that nice working tip on it. So this knife is really business up front. But what it comes down to is the party in the back. So on the back side here, this is where this knife gets interesting. We have an integrated nail clipper. Now, before I lose anybody here, the interesting thing about this is that I, I'll admit, you know, this is one where my boss may not love me for saying this, but this concept was not necessarily my favorite thing up front. I thought, <laughs> man, if you're not, what is this? And oddly enough, it really is super, super handy having that little clipper on there. Yeah. Um, I keep saying, I just, I just got through three birthdays with my kids. And when you've got the doll in the package and you've got the little plastic snaps and even like yep. some of the little zip ties that they have in there just being able to use these little nippers and clip oh, things absolutely and yeah i hadn't even thought about seven that seven year old that... watching you don't want to cut the doll's leg and you're, yeah it's terrifying these are really handy a little, little bits fantastic. of rope fishermen can use them for cutting monofilament there's so much you can do with these and and yes you know they are good for your nails and and it's made me not be a savage anymore i'm not out there with scissors cutting my nails i actually have one of these <laughs> now and it's it's civilized me a bit. Right there, you go. Yeah, <laughs> that is fantastic. Very unique, and I, I like it. I like it a lot. I love that uh, extra level of utility always. And um, the like you said, the double detent um, non locking folder there. That's a really cool design as well. Not not a lot of people are doing anything like that. Yeah. So this will have an MSRP of fifty nine ninety nine. And it's just so smooth, and it packs a lot in in for that price. Nice, nice. All right, well, let's move on. To, um, let's see what we've got next. What do you want to talk about next? You know, I I kind of want to I kind of want to talk about these these big fellas here. So <laughs> we have the Strata XL and the Strata. Yeah. And <laughs> as you can see, these are a big knife. So or big knives, excuse me. So. The bigger knife has a five and a half inch blade. 
and I, I can't call it the smaller knife, but the 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 knife that's just big is a four and a quarter <laughs> blade. Um, the one that's so, just big, yeah. Yeah, they they are they are Gonzo. But the cool thing about these, and this is what gets it for me, is I, I'll admit I'm not a big knife guy. I really like like a three inch, three and a half inch blade, but they're relatively slim. Yeah. Oh, they're that super does a number slim. of things for you. They're super you slim. Have, and I mean, so so we have a we have a really high flat grind on these blades. Um, it makes them really nice slicers. Um, it was funny one one of our one of our guys in production pointed out this would make a great um, like a camp kitchen knife. Oh, even. absolutely! I hadn't even of thought about that until things. you just mentioned it. Yeah, I never never occurred to me, but they flip really nicely for how big they are. The oh, blade yeah. stock is relatively slim, and the handles are relatively slim. So. Un unbelievably these carry really well yeah uh, i can't say it'll work for everybody's jeans but i know like for my <laughs> levi's and my wranglers even this big knife i can fit it all the way into my pocket with that deep carry pocket clip it drops all the way in and it disappears and then <laughs> it's almost like a magic trick you keep you, you take it out of your pocket and just keep on there's more knife that keeps coming out <laughs> um but they're fantastic and i've really i've really grown fond of especially the 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 one that's not quite as big Right. Four, four, four inch blade. And again, the other surprising thing is they're remarkably light. Oh, yeah. They're super light. And I like, I, I'm one of those guys that I like aesthetics. I like a knife to actually, <laughs> I, I like it to look good and look cool. And uh, so I like the uh, the copper uh, on there. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. And so that that is an aluminum inlay with a copper copper anodize or copper colored anodize on it nice these yeah. do have a full g10 front scale so a little upmarket they're they're a little little nicer um we have a steel frame lock on the back side and again that that copper colored anodize on the over travel stop right uh single position deep carry pocket clip and these are running on our kvt ball bearing washers nice very um, nice Oh, and I, unless I forget, these both have D2 blades. So yes. really worth pointing out that these are a bit upmarket in that level. So yeah. the we have the Strata here, which is a $99 MSRP. And then if you want to go for the full big Strata XL, that's a $119.99 MSRP. Fantastic. Those are really cool. I like them. I like them a lot. All right. What do we want to talk about next? Okay. So... Next, I want to pull up something that's a little, little different for us. We don't do a lot of these, but I'm really excited about this one. So this would be the brace. Um, so this is our, our new little neck knife. And, uh, you know, neck knives are kind of a thing. I know a lot of people like them. And people tend to think of, I think of it as a self-defense thing and something you hide inside of your shirt. And right. you can do that. And it works really nicely. It comes with this, this paracord and a nice sliding adjuster. So you can make it whatever length you want it to be or take it all the way off. Um, it has a couple holes in the sides of the sheath here where you can lash it onto things. It'd be good for outdoors. And that, and that, what I, that's what I really think is amazing about this is I wish I could show it through the camera, but this is remarkably light. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's insanely light. Um, I, I, I wish I had the weight on me, but it's, it's only a couple, it's, 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 it's just a couple ounces. Yeah. And that for so, for so many people for that kind of that, the outdoorsmen who really don't want to pack a lot, they want to keep it really minimal. Right. Um, for the REI crowd that start counting grams and ounces, oh, yeah. it's a great knife. And something I just um, noticed, and uh, this the sheath is actually ambidextrous, so it'll hold it either way. I'm so so glad you pointed that out because that particularly for, I, I'm kind of dumb about sheaths, and so I tend to if you give me the opportunity to put it in backwards, I will. <laughs> yeah. And so we made sure it was a big. This is that was a big one on this one was that the sheath was you it was reversible right. you know, going either way. Once you're done with the knife, doesn't matter which way you're holding it, which way the sheath has flopped on you, because that happens too. It just goes in. That's fantastic. Um, I keep showing you the sheath. The sheath is injection molded, and we have our little knife here with just about a two-inch blade, um, and then we have injection molded overlays with a with a G10 texture, um, and again, a really relatively slim, lightweight blade stock. It just does everything it needs to do, and it's nice and small and light and the last thing that's great about this is the price the the msrp is 34.99 so it's very affordable wow. yeah um use it if you lose one i mean go pick up another they're they're relatively inexpensive and they're just really a lot of bang for your buck like you said earlier super lightweight i i love this thing that is fantastic and a great little uh 
little tool, little utility knife to just keep on you right there. All right, so we've got some, uh, up next, we've got some really cool and very new and very different uh, offerings from Kershaw. Absolutely. So we're calling these Project Atom. Um, so these are actually a series of polymer knives. And we're going to offer a couple different styles, a couple different appearances and sizes. These two are very daggerish. And right. so these are actually made from a very tough glass reinforced polymer. Um, being that they're, there's, there's very little steel in them. Really, we just have a couple of small steel pieces. Right. Um, these little, these little non-removable steel pieces that um, just make them so that, you know, we're trying to make these fun. We're trying to make these different, you know, we think people will come up with uses and things for them. But I want to be clear, we're, we're not trying to make these go through a metal detector. Right. These all have steel parts on them. But what it does is it gets you something that's really interesting and neat. I mean, this is just a fun vintage style dagger. Oh, absolutely. And they're going to yeah. be really, really cheap. They're fantastic. So it's, it's and kind of a cool uh, novelty. Uh, let's see. Is this one the Arise? Is that what that is? The Arise? Yeah, so, so this one is the Arise, and this is the Inverse, which I'll admit our, our other designer came up with that name because it's kind of backwards because it's right. got steel scales and a plastic blade rather <laughs> exactly. than the other way around. Yeah, that's actually kind of uh, cool. I like that. Now, is yeah, the Arise, so, is that one weighted? It feels like it's weighted a little bit in the handle. I, uh, it's really, it's really, it's got that, these two little steel pieces in it. But other than that, no, it's okay. it's just, a, it's just a much heavier chunk of polymer that you're holding on to. And it, it does really have a nice kind of heft to it. Yeah, it does. It feels, it feels right. really good and it, it, it you, you can manipulate it very easily. I like that. Those are really yeah. cool. I like those. All right. Yeah. So, so the big one has an MSRP of $15.99. And the little guy will have an MSRP of fourteen ninety nine, so that is the Arise and the Inverse. Very nice, and I think people. I, I'm like you. I think people can uh, definitely come up with um, very interesting uses for these uh, that are going to be, you know, very uh, copacetic, if you will. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think those are great. I like it. I like it. I yeah. like new stuff all the time. <laughs> all right, what do we want to do next? Let's see. So. Next up, I've got I've got a couple of knives. Um, let's see. Let's get, let's do this one first. We we've done a number of knives this year that are a bit of an upgrade. So this is the this is the Highball Two. Um, we did a smaller knife last year called the Highball, and this is kind of a. It's not really the same design. It's it's been upgraded, but it, they they feel like family. They feel like cousins or brother and sister. And so this one's a little larger. Um, this is more like a three and a half inch blade. Right. And then we have, again, kind of like the original knife, we have a, a, a large groove in the blade on both sides. Right. And that allows you to open it up manually just like that. It doesn't have a flipper, but it is running on our KVT ball bearing washers. And yeah. that's what I wish I could demonstrate how smooth and awesome that feels to open. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, and it, it, it flicks open with, really, really easy too. Yeah. No, it's... It's just, it opens and closes just, well, like it's on ball bearings because yeah, it is. Exactly. It's, it's just so. <laughs> Should we cut that and start over? Uh, just keep going. You're just, good. I, I can fix yeah, it. Yeah, it's all good. I might keep oh, it. We can, we can edit that out. That was, that was actually pretty funny. Hold it back up. Okay. That was actually pretty funny. Um, you don't have to, but. But yeah, but yeah I, I love this one. It's. We talked about earlier before we actually started the video was uh, um, how much I'm into aesthetics, and I love how clean this design is. It's it's just super clean, super smooth, very uh, executive carry, if you will, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, and it, and it really is meant to be kind of gentlemanly. Yeah, in the, in that regard, right? Um, so it has a, it has a a as a steel frame lock on the back, reversible deep carry pocket clip. And then this 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 blue inlay in the back is actually meant to be kind of a bridge for your fingers to rest on. Okay. So it's meant to kind of help you not push on the lock bar. Exactly. So yeah. it gives you somewhere to kind of it kind of gives you somewhere you don't realize, but you sort of naturally can feel it. Yeah. Kind of go your fingers kind of want to want to sit there, and then it makes it easier. And you'll forgive me, I'm I'm left-handed, so I'm doing this kind of backwards, but right. But it makes it easier to open that without pressing on the lock bar and making it more difficult. Yeah. That's fantastic. So this is the Highball, oh, I'm sorry, Highball XL, not Highball 2. And this has an MSRP of $84.99, and it has that upgraded D2 steel blade. Nice. So 
Next up, I want to do two more that are uh, kind of an upgraded knife. Uh, we have the Collateral and we have the Turismo. Now, they're two very different knives, but they're kind of familial. And I want to talk about them because this is a, uh, some people may look at these and go, well, this look kind of familiar. And that would be because they are. So we actually released these two knives a few years ago with a, a little bit of a different opening mechanism. And it was really cool, but it was something that the factory struggled a lot with. And we really liked the designs. And so we finally had to come to a point where we said, this isn't going to work. And so we retooled them. So now instead of using that, that different mechanism, what we're using right. is a tr traditional flipper, but we've made it really minimal and we put some nice crisp jimping on the front of it. Right. So that when you open this knife, the flipper actually completely hides in the handle. That's fantastic. And we did the same thing with the little Turismo. So same kind of deal. It's a real small, minimal flipper. But what's cool about these is that they still open really nicely. Right. And that's due to that's due to several things. Um, one is due to the fact that these do have the speed safe assisted opening mechanism. They're not manual. And the other is that we actually paired these with the KVT ball bearing washers. And so that gives it this really glassy, slick yeah. and aggressive opening action. They really they open with authority. Yeah. And that has to do with the fact that we're using those KVT ball bearing washers. So the uh, the collateral is the larger one. And that's a three and a quarter inch blade, steel handles, cool carbon fiber inlay on the front. Um, and then on the back side, we have a, a steel frame lock and we have a reversible pocket clip non-deep carry in this case that is just so then on, the, on the oh go ahead sorry that is these are these are absolutely gorgeous um like you said I, I like the the flipper how minimal it is um because i hate things catching on my pocket so that's that's yeah. a fantastic design and the fact that it just you touched on it but having it molded to the same shape as the actual handle scales right there is perfect can let's let's show that up close right there it is just fantastic right there. It matches perfectly um, the shape on the on the handle scales. I, I love that. That that attention to detail just shows um, how great these are. So then the uh, the smaller one is the Turismo, and that is it's a two point seven five inch blade on this one, and we have a nicely contoured steel front scale and back scale. And frame lock on this one as well, and a nice black oxide finish on the handles. And then that D2 blade has a full width flat grind with a with a satin finish. So real slicey. Uh, it's got that leaf shaped blade. Um, just a real comfortable, easy to carry knife. Very Not nice. particularly thick, um, just kind of right. Very nice. Now, I've got to ask, in true Kershaw fashion, will these come in different colors? At this point, no. At no. this point, they they're just coming in these colors. But if they if they're popular, yeah, we'll right. definitely oh, absolutely. make some different yeah. variations. And uh, what's the MSRP on um, the the smaller one, the Turismo? You know, actually, they are they're the same price. Oh, really? Okay. They are both seventy one ninety nine. Very nice. So, everyone you like. Very nice. Absolutely. All right. What do we want to do next? Let's see. Well, next up, actually, let's talk about the drivetrain. So that that is our new rescue knife. So that had that, oh, that features you. a new style of seatbelt cutter. Right. Uh, it has a it has a glass breaker, a carbide glass breaker, mounted in the back spacer here. That uh, and we have a full size blade uh, with speed safe assisted opening. Very sharp. That, uh, that glass breaker is very sharp, isn't it, Isaac? <laughs> <laughs> Isaac yeah, don't, ended up don't. biting himself oh, with did. that. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't drop it on a glass coffee table or anything. That would be a bad <laughs> idea. Um, but they, they work really well. They have to be. We've done a lot of testing on glass breakers. I will say that this being a rescue knife, it's something we take very seriously. Um, we've actually made a relationship with the guys at our local, our local scrap yard and um, been able to go out and test these, cut seat belts, break windows, and we're really happy with how that works. Yeah. Now, the big thing for this knife is that it has a D2 blade, so it's a bit of an upgrade. Uh, I, that that sample is mismarked, but it is D2. This happens at uh, this kind of early stage. Yes. These are prototypes you're holding. Gotcha. And then the biggest thing for this is that we've rethought how the 
how the glass breaker works. So as you, I'm sorry, the uh, the seatbelt cutter. Yeah. So as you were just demonstrating, that is actually a very short throw to open. Yeah. So when you're, if you're under duress, if you're, if you're, if you're stuck in a car, or even for a first responder, when your blood is up and you start losing that fine motor control, it's really nice to just have that really short throw. It locks in place, and and the seatbelt can just slide right along that handle and is guided into there. We also have kind of a longer finger on the end of here to help guide whatever right. material into there. Yeah. And, it, and as a lot of people will point out, these are useful for other things as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I really, I'm really happy about how that turned out with that, that real short, simple motion and that locks securely in place. So it just makes it real easy to use, even in a bad situation. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned uh, using them for something else. I think they're great for cutting zip ties. Um, yeah. Cause I always feel uncomfortable <laughs> like getting an actual blade under a zip tie and then pulling back towards me or something like that. It, it's never, yep. it never works quite right. So something like that is going to be perfect to just get down on that zip tie and just snap it right off. I think we've all felt that stress. It's, <laughs> you feel like you're uh, going to pull harder than I've got control. And then it's just yep, going to fly. Absolutely. Back yeah. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Like you said, there's a lot of different uses other than just cutting a seatbelt on that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. All right. What's up next? So I want to do a couple more with our D2 steel, and then we'll, we'll move on to some that are a little more of a, of a budget-friendly EDC. So this is a really cool knife. This one's called the Endgame. Which one is that? So, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now this one, again, you know, it's funny you're talking about aesthetics. This one is definitely more of a study in how do we make something really cool. Yeah. Um, we've got these great overlays on the handle that are that are kind of a uh, i'm sorry a bronze color we have it we have an injection molded inlay as well that has a g10 texture on it um, another cool overlay well underlay i guess down here in the handle there's a lot going on in just that front handle right a really interest interesting and complicated design uh, we have a d2 blade on this with a really cool aggressive kind of shape to it on the back side again we have our steel frame lock and we're using that bronze colored overlay as an over travel stop and we have a reversible deep carry pocket clip that is fantastic really cool looking um i know our producer isaac loves this one um it you know with uh, what's popular right now uh, with the mandalorian it does kind of uh kind of give that uh, mandalorian kind of feel it really does i'm so glad you said that <laughs> <laughs> I'm chiming in because that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, our our uh, our other designer who who did this one. I'm not going to take credit. This is his work, and it's beautifully done. He's a big fan of the Mandalorian, oh, and I think yeah. a little of that does 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 come through in this knife. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's not. It's I wouldn't call it a inspired by, but he's right, definitely no. got that aesthetic yeah. going on with it. So Absolutely, it's got a very similar feel to it. Yeah, it's that's yeah. that's really cool, and. Um, I gotta say the the spacer on the backside looks really interesting. Having that uh, skeletonized spacer, but that's yeah. solid all the way up. It, it's that's different and very cool. I like that. Yeah, it looks really minimal and, and really thin. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be super thick. It, it's it's holding the knife apart. It's, yeah, that's what it does. That's fantastic. I love that one. Yeah, so an MSRP of ninety nine ninety nine. This one is running on our KVT ball bearing washers, so it is manual in this case, and it is a D two steel blade. So kind of an enthusiast piece, and I think it's something that will appeal to that enthusiast crowd. Oh, absolutely, yeah. All right, what we've got up next? So next up, I'd like to talk about a little bigger one. This is this is the Cannonball. Um, gotcha. So again, this is one more that has that upgraded D2 steel blade. Um, this one is assisted opening. Again, we have a really cool kind of techno looking insert in the front of the handle that gives it almost a bolstered look. Um, then on the back side, again, we have stainless steel frame lock, um, kind of a different wide deep carry pocket clip and a full back spacer as well, like on that last one, but different, different kind of style pops up a bit out of the handle. Yeah. And just a comfortable full size knife, um, nice wide, high flat grind, great slicer, nice comfortable drop point style with a big belly. So lots of different things you can do with this knife. And having that upgraded D two steel is really nice. Yeah, 
I like the I cool. like the finish on that. I like that blade finish there, that black stone wash. Um, yep. Yeah. That's, yep. That's absolutely. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And this one is actually a for for having a D two blade. This one's really quite reasonable with a seventy nine ninety nine MSRP. Oh wow, that uh, that's a fantastic deal. Yeah. And that is the cannonball. Yep. Correct. Nice. Very nice. All right. What have we got next? All right. So next up, I'd like to do the, the bracket. So the bracket is this guy here. And yes. this has that, that cool cleaver style blade. Um, and there's a little more to this knife. I mean, that's what I think is great about this. Is I know, you know, we've seen kind of a trend towards this style of blade in the last few years. Oh, yeah. But I mean, really having that low tip is super useful. They're, they're, they're really great for, again, fine detailed work. Um, cutting things like if you're if you're if you're on a cutting board and you want to do something with a bit of a curvature, or just making scores, really handy. Opening boxes again that 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 tip is really handy, and you'll notice I'm putting my finger up here. Um, we I have was... jimping not only up here, but also back on the blade where your thumb might go. So it's got some thoughtful details, yes. um, giving you jimping in all the places you might actually use it. I, I, I was um, just noticing that on the on the tip out there, and that's that's fantastic. That, like you said, it gives you great, um, great sturdiness out there and, and great control um, for making curve cuts and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so this is a, this is assisted opening, and again, it has that kind of cool inlay in the front handle, giving it kind of a modern and interesting look, kind of like a bolster but a little different. Right. And then we have a uh, glass-filled nylon front handle with G10 texture, and a reversible deep carry pocket clip on this one. And then this has an MSRP of sixty four ninety nine. I love that blade shape. That's really cool, and that could be used as kind of a camp knife as well. We were talking about that earlier. Um, that could be a, a nice one, you know, just especially with that shape to rock down on a cutting board or something. Absolutely, yeah, it'd be a good good little chopper. Yeah, very slicey dicey. All right, moving right along. I think we've got. A couple more Kershaws we haven't talked about yet. We do, yeah. So the 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 remainder of these knives, including the last little guy that I'm going to talk about, are kind of in a what I'd call a budget friendly category. Um, they're very economical. But what I love about this is that we're not we're trying not to skimp on design. You know, at Kershaw, our goal is to provide a quality knife at whatever price point you can afford. So this one I'm showing you right now is called the Light Year. Um, this has a as a uh, an 8CR13 MOV blade, we have again glass filled nylon overlays, and this one is a liner lock, uh, reversible deep carry pocket clip, and this really slim, easy to carry profile. Yeah, that's fantastic. So small, light, comfortable, um, really just a nice little piece to carry around. And what's the handle material on that again? Uh, glass filled nylon glass filled with that nylon. again the G10 texturing on it. Nice, very nice. We feel like that gives a nice kind of just enough grip without being overly so. Yeah, and we use a, that on a number of pieces. That's a great EDC blade shape too. Yeah, absolutely. Just good for a lot of what you might do with a knife you carry all day. Right. Um, next up is another new knife. This is called the Terran. This one we actually released um, late last year. So I'll, I'll breeze through this pretty quick, but again, 8CR blade, um, kind of that nice sweeping blade shape. Oh, yeah. Steel handles with a really great texture. I love this texture on this knife. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, stainless steel frame lock, uh, reversible deep carry pocket clip. Uh, so some of these specs will come in similar because some of these things are just, I mean, when you're talking about an EDC knife, it's nice to have a deep carry pocket clip. Right. It's nice to be long and slim. We're just trying to offer a different flavor for everybody. And this one... Has a little bit more heft with the steel handles, but it's not obnoxiously heavy, and it's it's actually a little bit slimmer, given that it's a frame lock construction. Right. Fantastic. So, next up, something with a a little bit more of a I'd call it a military appeal. Oh yeah. Um, it's also kind of in that EDC category, but this is the this is the analyst. Um, so with that nice strong tanto tip, um, again stainless steel liners and glass filled nylon overlays 
Um, this is part serrated, which we don't do very much of anymore. So I, I tend to note that because I always have a few people asking me, can you make more serrated knives? So this one does have those part serrations. So if, you, you, if you've you been working on, had a long day and you start getting kind of dull up here, you can use those serrations to power through what you need to do. Right. So deep carry pocket clip, glass filled nylon with the G10 texture and kind of a comfortable three and a quarter inch blade length. Just good size. That is really cool. That's a, a, and it's so lightweight. It looks like it would be heavier than it actually is. Um, it's ex, it's yeah. insanely lightweight for the size. Um, yeah. And as you can see right there, um, it even it even flew out there even when I didn't do a great job of opening it. Um, so yeah. and that's the beauty of speed safe. Exactly. <laughs> um, and this one has an MSRP of forty nine ninety nine. Very nice. So, Failed to mention nice. that earlier. And you know, I, I missed that on the Terran too. My apologies. So let's but let's move on here. We have the uh we have the tremolo. Yes. So this is a fun knife. And again, this has some of those steel inlays again, giving it kind of a look and a feel. Um, a little bit of texture to hold on to. Relatively slim, very light. Um liner lock construction with the with the glass filled nylon overlays again. Then we have that same kind of cool steel inlay on the back and our reversible deep carry pocket clip. Now this one is very budget friendly at an MSRP of $34.99. Wow. So, so very aggressively priced. And again, I love that we're getting a lot of design and interest for that. So yeah. you don't have to feel like this is a budget knife. This feels like a more expensive knife than it is, but it gives you that quality at a, at a reasonable price point. Yeah, I will say the, the action on that one feels a lot more expensive it, it just i mean it pops out there so nice yeah so that, that's that. the tremolo and what's the blade steel on that one is that eight um this should be 8cr13 okay mov yeah you can see my my, my sample here isn't marked and yeah uh, <laughs> mine's not either and i i, I like that I, I think that's kind of i think that's fantastic so these 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 will have laser markings, right. but unfortunately, like I said, my sample here this is correct uh, tooling sample, but didn't get that on there in this case. Um, so then something real minimal, just just real quick, I'm going to bring this one up. So this is the nacho. So as the yes. name might suggest, it's kind of a fun you know uh, little little party keychain tool. So it doesn't do a whole lot, and it doesn't cost a whole lot. Um, it's a real simple thing. Uh, MSRP on this, I believe is eight ninety nine, And so it really, it's a bottle opener. You've got, you've got a, you've got a steel piece and you've got some, some nylon overlay that makes it a little less rattly in the pocket, makes it kind of it, on your key ring. It makes it a little, little quieter and softer. That's fantastic. And it's just, it's just, it's, it's meant to be minimal and small because it, it, it's a bottle opener. You hang on your keys. It, it looks cool. You could pry on things a little bit with it, but really it's just, it's meant to be there because a bottle opener is one of those things that when you need it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a, the, only, the only thing it'll do. So it's right. nice to have that. And yeah, MSRP of eight ninety nine, So very reasonable. That's These awesome. And I, I will say that uh, I'm one of those guys that just loves putting stuff like that on my key ring. I'm like, I'm going to need yeah. that at some point. I don't, it's eight ninety nine, <laughs> and it's going on my keychain. Uh, I might not use it yeah. super often, but I, I want it. I want it. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. And that's called the Nacho. That's it a is, great yeah. name too. That's a great, great name. <laughs> <laughs> We've got something else that's uh, extremely minimalist too here. I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and in that same category of like, when you really need it, nothing else will do the job. Right. We've all tried to. If, if you've ever tried to cut down a whole tree or even hack a real thick limb with with an yeah. axe. Um, you just appreciate a good camp saw. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm, I, I can tell you from experience in the last couple of weeks, uh, on Christmas Eve, we got, uh, unexpectedly got eight inches of snow at my house. And, oh, wow. um, so we ended up having, uh, three trees down across my driveway and this would have really come in handy. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely could have used this cause we're talking about trees that were, you know, maybe three inches in diameter and 
this would have been a lot easier to use than me out there with a hacksaw or a handsaw or something um, yeah. in the snow and trying not to fall and bust my butt. But yeah, that's, that's <laughs> fantastic. And, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I was like, I, I love this because it's, it's one of those things that it's very handy to have when you need it. Like you said, nothing else will do. And there's not a lot of people out there making good ones. Um, you can find a lot of cheap ones that are not going to hold up, but one that you can actually depend on to, be, to use, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always say this, that the saw is, is not the bell of the ball. I mean, this is kind of a humble product. And our previous version is kind of the one, like I, I always tell my little conversion story with this. We, I, you know, year, years ago, we had the previous version of this saw. Um, with the same same blade tooth pattern. We really liked how that worked, so we maintained that on this one. Yeah. Um, but while we revised the handle, heavily changed it all up to make this more more modern and give it a sleek new look and feel, we did a lot of testing to make sure this was comfortable. It's actually kind of a reverse egg shape. In, yeah. In, can't really see it on camera, but where your hand actually grabs, grabs it, it's a little bigger on the top, a little slimmer on the bottom. And we meant that to be very comfortable and easy to use. We tested a lot of these. Uh, a lot of samples on this to get it right. Yeah. And then years ago with the old version of this, I, I, I was kind of in my first home and we didn't have a whole lot of tools at the time because I'd been living in apartments prior to that. And so we brought home a Christmas tree and I wanted to fresh cut the, the bottom of it to make sure it would soak up the water. Right. And I got out there with with a traditional, just a carpenter saw, that cheap garbagey one that I had. And I just was hacking away and hacking away and it was just taking forever and it wasn't working i gave up and i went and got a little little jab saw that i had really a drywall saw i was trying that nothing worked right. and i remembered oh my gosh i've got this kershaw saw and zip 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 right through that tree i mean you know big old four inch thick right tree and it, it just went right through it in just just a couple of couple of shakes and it, I, I was really blown away at how handy that was and i i use these so much i mean at my old house i had a lot of problems with trees and we were always murdering these poor trees trying to keep them from falling on things and <laughs> yeah i just it's one of those things that i don't ever want to be without again because right. they're they're not terribly expensive and they're just really really handy so we love this saw it's an msrp of 49.99 and it's just something you should have in your toolbox it's it's just when you want it you're so happy to have it, it yeah it's that's an invaluable tool when it when you need it um and also uh, you know to the point of snowstorms and all that, which you guys are, you know, familiar with up where you are, but, uh, uh, trees down or something like that to keep in your car. Um, yeah. To keep like with a spare tire or something. Uh, I, I always keep a tool bag in my car for, you yeah. know, things that I might need. And, and something like this would be a great addition to that. Um, that's true. I should on, probably do that. <laughs> I mean, even if, it, even if you're just, you know, like a hunter or something, you're, uh, keeping it in your truck, for like when you take your four-wheeler out in the woods hunting or something like that uh, it's just yeah. something that you might need because uh, you might not go down these trails all the time or something like that it, yeah very invaluable <laughs> tool and very affordable for 49.99 is that what you said yep yep fantastic yeah awesome all right well uh i believe now we've got some uh, zts to take a look at right that's right yep absolutely awesome. so I actually brought up a little more recent prototype, so mine will be a bit more correct. But I want to start with kind of our new flagship model, and that is the 0762. Yes. So I just went and grabbed this um, before we started our video here from from our, our R&D department. So this is uh, kind of hot off the presses. <laughs> no logos on it, but this is actually all correct for finishes and all that, which unfortunately I haven't had before now. So this is the 0762. Um, this has a CPM 20 CV blade with that camera doesn't do it much justice, but it's a two tone finish with stone wash on the flats. And then the beautiful grinder satin on the, on the grinds on the yes. false edge and the main bevel. Um, we have a black carbon fiber handle. And then this knife features what we call our tune detent system. So what we've done is again, we, we always talk about the problem that people will get their fingers on the lock bar and they'll make the knife hard to open. And so the tune detent system essentially creates a secondary detent bar in the front handle rather than 
having your detent be controlled by your lock bar. So in doing that, we, we put a separate liner essentially in the front handle that, that works like, like that holds that, that has a detent ball in it. And then we move the hole for that detent ball into the front side of the blade rather than the back. Okay. And so then what that does is you can't touch that. You can never touch the actual detent bar. It's inside of the handle. Um, so in this case, what you're seeing, this, these kind of layered pieces inside of here, the blue piece on top is actually a, a, a piece of titanium that we've added there for show and to give it kind of a cool look. And then that silver piece you see underneath with kind of the, with the, uh, I'll call them swooshes going the two different directions. Yeah. That is actually your tuned detent bar. Okay. So you can actually see that through the handle, but it's, it's protected by that titanium cage on top. And, um, and that's what controls your detent. So this knife snaps, opens really nicely. Uh, and then we have a, we have a blue titanium, a, a blue anodized titanium sub frame lock. And again, that blue anodized bent titanium pocket clip. And even the tube spacers in this are a titanium part that are that nice blue anodized. And so gives us something where not only can you you have this beautiful look from the factory, but then lots of people love to strip these, bead blast them and customize them, re-anodize and do all kinds of cool things. And so there's there's lots of room for personalization there. I know some of our dealers even do that. So you can get a knife right out of the box that's had cool custom features done to it. Yeah, that's fantastic and super lightweight too with that carbon fiber. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you put that in your pocket and you're not going to feel it at all. It's like yeah. it's not even there. Yeah. Um, running on KVT ball bearing washers, and this has an MSRP of four hundred dollars. So again, kind of like I said, kind of a flagship piece, right? Uh, meant to be kind of the top of the lineup, and that is the ZT0762. But the fit and finish is absolutely fantastic. Just beautiful, beautiful work on that one. All right. Now, I should point out, by the way, that the, the sample you have there, unfortunately, is an earlier prototype, so some right. of the finishes and materials yeah. are wrong. So, um. The one I'm showing you here right now is is actually is correct. Accurate, correct. Yeah, it has everything on there, so that's how you'll see it that in the catalog in, in production. Yeah, those are gorgeous, gorgeous, fantastic work on that. All right. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Which one next? So next up, I want to talk about the 0990. So that is this little guy right here. So. For those of you who, who know who know a little about our brand, we made a knife a couple of years ago called the own the own the triple nine the O nine nine nine, and it was a big knife and it was a bit wider than this and significantly longer. It was like a three three point seven five inch blade, and we didn't make a whole lot of them. It was a very limited run, and it was a super cool knife, but not a lot of people got to get their hands on one. And so, in this case, we've decided to make a little more budget-friendly version of that knife in the 0990. So we've tried to maintain kind of the soul of that knife and some of the cool things that that made it what it was. So if you look here, we have kind of the key feature of that knife is what I, I kind of call this floating bridge. Right. So when you open the blade a little bit, you can see that that actually is totally free-floating. Um, that that backspacer running into right up to the stop pin yeah. is just its own separate piece. Um, and then this knife, when you, when you close it, your 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 flipper rolls kind of right through there and, and lands on the stop pin again. So it's got great action, nice snap. It's running on KVT ball bearing washers. Uh, we have a stone wash 20 CV blade, carbon fiber handles, and then we have re an inset liner lock on this. Um, and we have this cool steel overlay. And so I want to talk about the fact that a lot of this knife is made out of steel. So, for example, like these big liners here, they are made out of steel. And people, there's probably going to be a few people that say, well, why didn't you make them out of titanium? Why are they, you know, steel's cheap. Why would you do that? And the truth is that this is something where we wanted to make this very strong, keep with that ZT ethos that we have. And we were concerned about the titanium being too floppy, given that this is, we wanted to keep the knife relatively thin and comfortable to carry. Right. And so in this case, using steel liners is the right decision. So we did that, and then we have our, our zero tolerance logo uh, molded into the backspacer up here. So we have it debossed in there. Um, reversible deep carry pocket clip, and yeah, just a comfortable, fun, easy to carry knife with an MSRP of two hundred and seventy-five dollars. So it's a few bucks more than something like our seven seventy, which is is two hundred and forty MSRP. 
right. it's got a lot of cool things going on and it's a really fun knife and something you can carry every day. Yeah. And again, on that one, super lightweight. Um, I do like, and I had noticed this and, and pointed it out earlier when we first got this box, the, uh, the, uh, logo right there on the spacer. That's, that's fantastic. That's great attention to detail. And that's, that's one thing that I love about Z, ZT. I mean, you, you're always going to get attention to detail when it comes to that. Yeah, so we're, we're pretty excited about this knife. I think it's going to be a cool piece. And again, we did a lot of things. We even, we even, even though it's shrunk down from the larger knife, we even narrowed it out a bit. We really wanted this to be really comfortable and easy to carry. So yeah. we hope people find that to be a nice kind of, again, gentlemanly kind of EDC. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I call it pocket jewelry sometimes, just something yes. that you, you kind of want to pull it out and show it to your friends, kind of like a barbecue 1911. Like people get yeah. a, a real fancy pistol that they want to show off to their buddies. It, right. I feel like this is the same kind of thing. It's still functional, but there's a lot of interesting things. It's a conversation starter. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. All right. Moving on. We've got one more and that would be the 0308 BLK TS. That's a mouthful. So, That's <laughs> it is. It is. I wish I could just call it peacemaker or something. That rolls up <laughs> right. <there>. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we released the 0308, as many know, last year, and actually it did very well for us. We're really happy yeah. with how that knife was received. Um, it's a throwback. And, you know, we we want people to know we listen. You know, we've had some people say, oh, man, you, you used to make big, beefy knives, and you don't do it anymore. We And we have focused a lot on thinner, lighter, easier-to-carry knives, much like the last two you saw. Right. And so the, 03, the 0308 has been a real throwback and kind of an evolution of the, of the 0300 series. And so, of course, since we're, we're going in that direction, we had to make one that had the black G10 scale and the tiger stripe blade. Now, we've, we have updated this knife a little bit in a couple different ways. One is this tiger stripe is a little different. It's actually a black wash blade with a tiger stripe rather than a black DLC. So it's, it's a different, it's a little bit different finish, a little more gray. It's still very durable and very cool. Um, we, have a, we have a black DLC coating on the titanium handle on the back makes that very durable and, and gives it that nice, dark, anti-reflective finish. Uh, we still have the easily adjustable solid steel pivot that goes through the knife. And this nut on the backside is adjustable with a half inch uh, combo wrench. Or if you, if you, if you, even if you have a crescent wrench, just an adjustable wrench, you can adjust this in the field really easily. You don't need a Torx for that. Okay. Um, so you can kind of use whatever you have and running on our KVT ball bearing washers. It's got nice action. It snaps with authority. And this one has an MSRP of $400 as well. Yeah, I'm like, I, I love that action. Once you once you put enough pressure on there to overpower that detent, it just flies right out. And, yeah. and that's without it being assisted. It's, it's fantastic. It feels great. The, the weight distribution is fantastic. And one of the things I like in a knife like this, um, for what it's going to be, you know, for is some heft and to know that you've got a knife, you know, that's, yeah. that's exactly what this is about. Um, it's to know that you've got a serious tool that's going to be able to do the job regardless. Yeah. We really find two, two schools of thought among people and, and sometimes they, and sometimes it, it can be mixed. I mean, sometimes people are like me where they'll, they'll split it where, some days I really just want something light that I'm going to forget about in my pocket. Right. And some days I want something that's got that reassuring heft. And exactly. yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> it just opens with authority. I mean, it just yeah, it flax. It's, it's a big solid piece of steel coming out. <laughs> and, um, but I mean, that says I'm durable, you know, use me hard. I'm going to, I'm going to laugh it off. Yeah. And that's what this knife is about. That is fantastic. And the MSRP on that one again is, uh, four hundred dollars. Four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic, Jim. It has been great talking to you. Um, and these are some incredible offerings. We are super excited and super stoked um, with these new knives from Kershaw and from ZT for twenty twenty one. And thank you so much for joining us and and talking to us today. We've had a blast. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Well, folks, you can find these new knives in our store and on our website. New for twenty twenty one from Kershaw and ZT. Jim, again, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you right back here next time. And remember, if it cuts, we carry it. <laughs>